You had no time to love and she said Alright guys, while the onyx is apart, quick video on how I did my turn signal. So what I like about these turn signals is they have built-in relays and I sourced it from Amazon relatively cheap. Uh, and that, having built-in relays, it saves you space inside. You don't have to put relays in here. Uh, I didn't have a wiring diagram at the time, but I did know that there was a connector that the Kelly controller used that wasn't hooked up to anything and that ended up being right here kind of tucked away hidden but that what didn't used to have these these wires going through it uh, without the wiring diagram grab my voltmeter and I went into ground in here there's a junction block the ground wires are all hooked up down at the bottom positive wires at the top so I, I took my voltmeter put the ground up to the bottom post and then started probing up here for power when the turn signals turn to the left and when the turn signals turn to the right five wires going out of the back, I ended up only needing to use four of them. So what I found when the turn signal was, was turned to the left, I got voltage on one side. When I turn it to the right, I got it to the other side. And then I was thinking, what, what are the other wires too? Well, the LCD has its own lights that indicate when a turn signal is turned to one direction or the other, and you need to feed that. So the idea came the way to use the least amount of space, I took a, a spade connector and I just lightly with a pair of needle nose, turned them at a 90 and that happened to fit perfectly for jumping from one side to the other. So when power goes out, when it gets turned on to one side, it'll actually both send it back to my turn signal on the power side and back up to the indicator up top, turning on the light. So you have to do that for both sides. That's two spade connectors. And then I used a little bit of, of hot glue when I was done to seal the deal. So two spade connectors, some hot glue, don't necessarily need it, but just to be on the safe side. And then some wiring, even though this is black and white, these are both power feeds, one to each side that run up through. I added conduit because I put on a different seat so it protects it from the elements back to the lights. The lights each will have a positive and a negative. You're really only hooking up the positive right for what I just explained. The negatives then have to run back through the same conduit and then split back to that negative, that negative post that you were using to do the ground test. So you're gonna need to put a big ring terminal at the end of the negative wires. So I got negative on the inside, positive on the outside. Relatively straightforward, only use four of the five wires. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Here we have the Onyx wiring diagram. Though it doesn't show you wire color, I wanted to zoom in on the turn signal connector to show you what you're looking at. So it shows using six wires. My Onyx only used five. The ground wire isn't used. So five wires going into the connector. The way I propose wiring this up you don't use that 12 volt constant wire. So now we're only dealing with four wires. Two of the wires will only show 12 volts depending on which way your turn signal switch is switched. And then the other two wires need to be sent power to turn on the little LEDs that are on your display. All right, we got our 12 volt step down here. It's located behind your controller. It sends 12 volts up to your turn signals. Turn signals located on the left hand side of your onyx handlebars. Displays located in the center and houses your turn signal indicators. Then you have your connector that's on the left hand side underneath the aluminum body panel that you're going to be removing. Your flashers or that you purchased and want to install. And then your junction block which has both positive and negative. We're only going to be using negative for both installation and for testing. So remember, five wires coming out of the back. We're going to be probing the front of these though and we're only implementing four of them. So here we have a voltmeter. We're going to need to set it to DC. We're testing volts DC. We're going to plug in the black wire into the COM port and now run it across and touch it to the negative side of your junction block. Should be located on the bottom. Positive now is going to go up and you're going to push that test lead into each one of the pins And what you're doing is you're searching for your constant voltage All 
All right, you've just found your constant hot wire. That means with your onyx on, no matter what position your turn signal switch is in, you're always gonna show 12 volts. You can disregard that. I don't use it for my wiring method. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is turn your turn signal switch to the right and perform the exact same test with the four remaining pins. You're looking for 12 volts. Okay, I found it. I'm noting it, and now I'm gonna do the exact same test again but with the switch turned to the left. There's only three pins remaining. Two of them will show no voltage. One will show voltage. There it is. Now I know there's two more wires that don't show voltage with the switch in any position. Those are the wires that feed out to your display. And I'm going to now want to use either a jumper wire or a fork terminal and I'm going to manually move that and stick it in one side on one of the powers and one side into one of those pins that never showed any voltage. So in this example, I'm simply taking my fork, pushing it in, and then you want to turn your turn signal switch to one side or the other. And you're going to be looking at the display to see which light comes on. In this example, everything works out perfect. But if for some reason it goes to the other side, then you're going to want to switch the bottom blade of your fork terminal to the other pin that didn't show any voltage. After you've done that, do the exact same test, but with your switch turned to the right. In this example, everything matches up perfectly. Okay, we're ready to wire up, but first let me just show you how power flows from your 12 volt step down to your turn signal indicator switch. You've got wires going to your connector, obviously. As soon as you turn your turn signal switch in one direction, power is allowed to flow through the fork terminal that you've just inserted and up to the display indicator light. We're ready to wire now. So your turn signal lights have negative and positive wires. We're going to be hooking up bullet connectors to those. Your tube frame, which runs underneath your seat, is what Onyx uses to run the wiring to the tail light and brake light. We're going to be mimicking that. So you're going to want to attach your bullet connectors, two on each side. You're going to use a ring terminal on the junction block negative side to connect your grounds. Here I'm running a 12, 20 gauge wire underneath your controller up through the tube frame and into the connector you've already crimped. You're going to now do the same thing on the ground side but to the junction block. There we go. So now you've completed one side and once that's done your turn signal will be flashing. Once you've done that you really just have to repeat the process using the other two pins in your connector for the other side of your flasher. Just repeat the process. It may look daunting. Trust me, it's not. You're only using four wires and a total of 10 connectors. Just remember to crimp everything down good, pull on the wire, make sure it's in there nice and snug. Um, process shouldn't take you too long. Here's all the tools that I needed. There was also a 20 gauge wire that I used sourced off Amazon. I'll throw it in at the end. But essentially that's it. I hope this can help some of you if you're thinking the tasks of hooking up flashers might be daunting. I noticed there wasn't any videos on it. I thought I'd make one.